If you think about it, circles are in everything. But who's really stopped to think about what all's in a circle? Welcome everyone to the Art Workshop. I'm your host, Christopher Epling. Thanks so much for tuning in today. And as with the opening kind of suggested, we're talking about circles. Now, circles may or may not be an important part of your life. For the most, they're not, but they're everywhere. So take this uh, as a challenge. One day as you're going about your daily activities, try to look around you and see and be aware of how many circles are in your environment. If you want to try to count them, you can. I wouldn't suggest it. I think you'd have a better chance maybe uh, counting some stars at night. But circles are a huge part of our life. And if you're interested in art and in drawing or, or animation or graphic design or anything dealing with drawing or, or any creative outlet with art, circles will come into play. Now there's a few tools that artists use to create perfect circles. No one, I don't think, can really draw a perfect circle freehand. That means without a tool, just holding a pencil to a paper. Um, I've tried, I know, and it's sort of impossible. But thank goodness we do have a few tools that will help us uh, when drawing certain things that require circles. Now, if you think about what sort of drawing could you do or, or what kind of drawing we, could we talk about where circles would play an important part, and the first one that comes to my mind is vehicles. Uh, you have wheels, you have uh, circles that make up the um, even the uh, bearings and, and the spokes and, and everything inside of a, uh, a wheel of a car. So let's incorporate that in today's drawing a little bit, which our subject is going to be a vehicle, but we're also going to be tying it in a little bit to uh, the Hillbilly Day festivals that take place every year in Pike County here. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a minute. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at a few tools that you can use with drawing um, that will help you if you're wanting to create a perfect circle. The first is the compass. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen one of these or not, but a compass is a device that is used primarily in geometry. Um, it's also used in art to create a perfect circle. And basically what it is is a, a metal or plastic instrument that looks about like this. It, um, it has a little dial at the end that you can twist to make these two um, um, extensions become wider or closer together. Now at the end of these two extensions are um, two important things that you need to create a circle. The first is the uh, spike or the metal tip here that you see, and the second, of course, is the actual pencil. So when creating a circle with a compass, you simply adjust this to the width that you want, which is the radius of the circle, will be your di diameter, and you place it down on your paper, press it firmly down, and you twist, and your circle will appear. Now compasses have been used um, for a very, very long time and they're great for art and the only bad part about it though is compasses generally make um, a, a circle at, at, at the perspective of the entire circle itself so you have the diameter shown. Now if you try to do any type of oblong shapes or, or anything like that you're going to run into problems. There's also stencils that are created such as this one. Now this is an uh, engineering um, uh, combo circle template and the combo circle template is exactly what, what, it, what it sounds like. There's tons of these circles on this page that you can use to lay down on your paper, take your pencil, then trace around creating a perfect circle. The widths range from uh, 47 millimeters all the way down to 1 16th. So it's a great tool to use if you're interested or need to draw a lot of circles. Artists sometimes use these, but for the purpose of our drawing today, we're, we're going to try to do this free-handed. If we need to bring in one of these templates, we will. Um, so if you want to go ahead and draw along with me, grab a piece of paper, grab a pencil. The topic of our uh, drawing today, what we're going to be focusing on, is going to be a, um, what we call a, uh, a hillbilly car. We see a lot of these in the parades around Pikeville whenever hillbilly days take place and they're really fun. It's a festive atmosphere and they're fun to look at and, and um, they're entertaining. So today we're going to try to use circles incorporate into our drawing by drawing a hillbilly car. Okay? Now, the first thing I want you to do, you remember the Marvel method where we would use ovals and shapes and squares and things to create our drawing. We're going to do something similar to that today. We're going to start out drawing a 3D box. Now, some of you have already done something similar to this, um, probably at home, um, where you'll draw a box or square, just like this, okay? So we have a, a square, or, or what I call a box. 
Now we're going to draw behind it um, another box. So this is going to uh, be simply just right behind the first uh, square, connect the angles, and now we're going to connect these lines across. And what this does is going to give us the impression of, of this is, has three, three dimensions to it. It's sort of coming off the page a little bit. This is our template for where the engine will be, okay? Similar to the Marvel method of drawing a framework. Now we're going to go ahead and work on the uh, next portion of the car, which is going to be the back. Um, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to draw a square running in, in this angle. Now pay attention to how your angles form. You notice that these lines that I have on this, on this box, they're all sort of uh, freehand the best I can, uh, running at, at the same angle, okay? And this is important. Uh, this, this gives us perspective. And you can use a ruler to establish a good line. It's important to always keep a good line whenever you're working towards um, drawing something with perspective, okay? Now this is not our actual drawing. This is just our template. This helps kind of give us a framework to go by. Now you can see this is at an angle, but we're going to use the same principles we used with the first box, and we're going to connect these lines together. Now believe it or not, these two shapes that I've just drawn is all we need to create our hillbilly car. Um, I'm going to be pressing down a little bit harder now on my pencil to kind of give you an idea of where these shapes are going to go, okay? So the first thing we're going to do, um, we're going to start up the front up here, and we're going to add, believe it or not, a rectangle right at the edge of this first square. Now the rectangle is set ever so lightly on the edge. Again, we're not doing anything right now that's, um, uh, too, that's too finished, as we call it. This is just laying out the general shapes. So we have another smaller rectangle right here. And now we're going to start to build a little bit of the actual finished piece to the car coming down this way, sort of like that, okay? Now here's where circles come into play. We're going to work on a headlight up here in the front. Now I could grab um, my, my helpful little graph here and kind of judge how big this headlight will be. Um, and I think for the purpose of this, I will um, go ahead and use it. You want to place your circle about halfway up the line and keep it over towards the edge just a little bit. So this is going to form one of our headlights right there. Now the second headlight we're going to leave off. We're not going to create a circle for it because that's going to be a lantern. It adds to the effect of the, of the uh, comical characterized hillbilly car, okay? So we have this piece here, which is the rectangle. We have this sloping down, and we're gonna add a wheel. Now for the wheel, I'm not using the guide because this is actually at a little bit of an angle, and you'll notice what I'm doing here. Um, there's a little bit of a slope to this. Um, it's like I took a circle and I squeezed it just a little bit, okay? And this is going to uh, be our first wheel, and we wanna add another back here. Again, almost uh, a little bit of a of a, a squeeze to your circle, okay? So now we have one, two, three circles. We need some back wheels here to show through, but we're gonna wait on that for a second. Now let's go ahead now and work on our engine. You're gonna come back up to the front, right here, this first square, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna add some detail in. Leave the headlight alone for now. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and follow our line that we made all the way up. Now here at the top, instead of following it straight across, we're gonna arch it over to the next one, sort of like this right here, okay? then bring it down again on this side. All right, at the top we're going to get our radiator cap, so just go ahead and draw a little oval here. All right, now let's add some more detail into our um, uh, front piece here to our vehicle. Um, we're going to draw two or three lines that form uh, another box inside of that, and then with this we're going to put some lines, okay, for the um, air can get into the engine. Notice I'm not taking these lines all the way to the top here at the, because I'm adding a Band-Aid, okay? Uh, you'll see a lot of these little effects and things on the cars if you ever come to Hillbilly Days in Pipeville. They're really fun and festive to look at and um, tons of different things they add to it to give the effect of, of someone has just, um, uh, you know, randomly took tons of different pieces of automobiles and appliances and everything else to form their Hillbilly car. Um, so. We're going to finish now with the front piece, which is our engine, by following uh, the back line back over to the back edge of the, of the um, square and down again. So you can see how this is coming together a little bit now. 
we've got the two arches here that form the shape. It gives us dimension and perspective. Let's go back up to the headlight. You already have your circle, which is all you need, but you're going to draw another circle in the interior part of that. Then you're going to draw one line coming down on this edge. Okay. Start back at the top of the circle and slope in. So this gives the effect that the headlight is protruding from the side of the vehicle. Now, as I promised, over here we're going to be using um, we're going to be using a different type of shape to form a lantern. And back in the day, a long time ago, um, folks had to carry lanterns around. My grandfather tells me a story of his father having to go to the outhouse, and he was in his older age, he was blind. And in order for him to find the outhouse, they ran a, a string attached to the back door out to the outhouse. And uh, they kept the lantern in there. So it's kind of a funny story, I guess. But. So now we're going to draw, as you see, um, two rectangles. The first one you draw, and then you just simply bring a line back from this edge, this edge, and a straight line down. To form the lantern, we're going to add a little piece up here at the top. And then we're going to draw another rectangle inside. If you really start to pay attention to shapes everywhere you go, just in general, you're going to see just how many circles and rectangles are used to make up things in everyday life. There's tons of shapes. And the more that I got interested in art, the more I started paying attention to this. And we're going to add a little patch on the side of our vehicle here. Now, some of the vehicles you see, especially during the uh, Pot County Hillbilly Day Parade, um, are very detailed. Uh, we're going to keep ours a little simple uh, just for sake of uh, the show time, okay? So now we're going to add an umbrella because, uh, of course, our cars are convertible. Um, we're going to bring it up and then we're going to bend it. And now we're going to add the shapes of an umbrella. Now to do that, you're just going to add these little waves that go across like that and then bring these up to a middle and over down. Sort of looks like the top of an apple a little bit. Okay, so that's going to give us our, our umbrella. Okay, now we need a seat. Now for the seat, it's really simple. Um, you're going to bring a line coming straight up here, over, down, and back in. So you see it's just a line here, it kind of arches there, straight down, and back in. Always following, like remember the first lines we made, the same angle. Okay, um, so now we're going to go ahead and add an armrest. The seat comes over, and let's go ahead and give it some lines coming down to show this is a seat, okay? Now, we're ready now to start on the back of the vehicle. We're holding off on our circles here for our wheels for the last because we need to add another one right here. There's a few more details we want to put in. We're going to give the effect of there being boards nailed together to make up the bed of this truck. Now, in order to do that, you first have to start out giving yourself lines to go by. And what I do is I draw just straight lines going back, equal distance apart, you don't have to make them equal distance apart. For the purpose of this, we will. Now, in order to add the effect of wood, what we're going to do, we're going to start here on the main edge, and we're going to draw lines down connecting where we have our lines separating the large rectangle. And we have those now. And then we're going to add a couple more random lines, such as this. Kind of looks like brick in a way but it's not. And we're going to now add some uh, grains to the wood, lines to give the effect that this is wood. At the end of this um, tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink this entire piece and I'll speed through that just to give you the idea of what it would look like for a finished piece. Okay, now we can start focusing on our wheels, the circles. Um, circles are very complex, but at the same time, if you overthink them, you're going to uh, constantly find yourself in trouble trying to get the effect you want with art. Um, we just want to follow the lines, kind of keep a um, somewhat of an equal distance line up from this one to this one, uh, the width of this uh, interior circle. Now we'll go ahead and add uh, the center circle where our spokes will all come down to. And then we can start adding our spokes coming out from this inner circle to the edge of our larger circle. You can add as many as you want or as little as you want. Try to keep them uniform. What I mean by that is if you have one here, place one here. Uh, try to do that. Symmetrical is the, the term we use in art. Now we're going to go ahead and add our back circle on. Um, follow the line that you made. Chances are you probably did not use a template. If you had of, what would happen is 
this circle would look like you were looking from uh, the car from the side straight on. Um, we're at an angle here looking at this car, so we want to have our circle, like I said, squeezed. Let's add the other circle in the middle. Add our spokes on. Now, the reason I'm not taking too much time and care in making everything uh, symmetrical and perfect is that this car is meant to look like it is, like I said, just put together, thrown together, okay? Now, let's go ahead on this edge over here. Like I promised, we're going to go ahead and add our other circle. We're only going to see a portion of this one underneath the vehicle, sort of like this right here, okay? Now, to give the effect of this is actually, you know, in the Hibley Day Parade, let's go ahead and put a steel in the back. For a steel, uh, a moonshine steel, we're going to just add a, um, what looks like half of a rectangle. On the side of this, we'll put a little plate here. And you can add some bumper stickers, things that they've added on, maybe a road sign, other things that, you know, might have been thrown together. Um, I'll put a stop here. Stuff like that. It kind of gives the effect this was thrown together. But back to the steel. Um, now we have this little plate on the side with just a few lines. The top of the steel will come up. And we're going to add this tubing coming out of the top. It's going to wrap around. Now these types of shapes throw a lot of artists off, but if you just keep uh, making the same shape over and over and over, you're going to be fine with it. Now, just for aesthetic reasons, I'm going to place a little pig in the back looking out. You can do this if you want. You don't have to. Um, I'm just going to throw this in. It's going to be kind of fast, but um, hopefully you can uh, follow along at home, okay? So a little, this little pig guy's just looking out the back of the, of the little car. There we go. I'll fill him in better later, okay? All right. So you can see how all these shapes came together to form the vehicle that we're working on. Circles are important, rectangles are important. I probably shouldn't have gave circles so much importance in this because rectangles are used just as much. But if you're interested in creating things that use a lot of circles, you have a couple of devices now that you know about that you can use. You can find these types of things, the compass and the template, both um, at your uh, local stores here in Pike County and then around the region that carry any type of art supplies or um, uh, things, school supplies, even with the compass, you'll find them there too. Okay, you do have to be sh sort of careful with the compass if you get a metal one, because believe me, this this end is sharp, and I have found out the wrong way a few times. Uh, never put it in your pocket, okay, and and carry it around. It's going to be a bad day for you, I promise. All right, so now we have our car drawn. As you see, it's in pencil. Um, we can add now ink to this, and what most cartoonists will do in the profession, they'll sketch out something similar to this, they'll go back, they'll ink it, and then what you do is you take your eraser at the end, once the ink dries, and you erase all of this pencil line out, and what you have is a completed piece in ink. And what I'm going to do now for you, we're going to speed through, and we're going to see this process in action, and at the very end, we're going to stop, and we're going to take a look at this and talk just a little bit about um, um, what you can do with your inking um, at home. Okay?
Okay, so we've taken out our pencil lines. We're in the process of doing that. You have to be sure and let your ink dry completely before you do that because, believe me, you work so hard on maybe a finished piece and then you get to, you know, excited about seeing it all, like, you know, finished as we call it, and you start erasing, and the next thing you know, it's going to you know, mess up. So be sure and let the ink completely dry. And as you notice, as I do this, the picture really jumps out. You can start seeing more of the details that's uh, coming through on the piece. Um, like I said though, be sure and let that ink completely dry before you go and start erasing. Be sure and get all your pencil lines out of there. Now I pressed down a little harder for the purpose of the show, of course, for you could see exactly what I'm drawing with the pencil lines. So it's a little more difficult or, uh, to, to get all these off of the page, but you can get the idea. And once you do this though, once you completely erase all your lines, and all you're left with is your ink drawing, you can see where things really uh, maybe need a little bit more uh, work or help. You can add a few more lines into your drawing, uh, things of that nature. So uh, it's, this is just a really uh, fun exercise. I hope you followed along with me um, and were able to put together something at home. It was a quick exercise and um, so I really appreciate your time today and checking out the uh, show. Uh, those of you who maybe create something and you'd like to share it, um, that's a great idea, and I'd love to see your work. We'd love to show your work here on the art workshop. Um, you can go to the uh, holler.org, click on the art gallery, and send me uh, a copy of your artwork, and I'll be sure to showcase it here on the show. Um, so after we finish up, we're going to tailor it up a little bit here, what we call finishing, polishing the piece, and... We can see how it all comes together. Um, the pencil lines have all been erased, and what we're left with is an ink drawing. A lot of cartoonists, when you see their work, they're so good at this process that they will actually um, uh, erase all the lines out that when you look at it, you think they just sat down with a pen and got to work on their drawing. Um, so you can do that with practice at home. You can get to the point where you're able to do that. Uh, circles are absolutely everywhere and we've used them today in our car to show you how they're used with wheels and vehicles and drawing vehicles. Uh, remember the key steps that we talked about. You want to box out your drawing. Be sure and put some um, shapes, general shapes to go by. Those will help guide you. Um, it's okay to put those in because you can erase uh, down the road as you finish your piece. So thank you so much for visiting and spending time with us today. I hope you've enjoyed the show. I hope you've learned a little bit and um, Again, send me your artwork. I'd love to see what you come up with. And if you use circles especially, uh, send those in to me, okay? Thank you so much, and as always, keep drawing.